quantum mechanics is full, chock full of non-intuitive things about the universe. The statements that we make in quantum mechanics about the subatomic world, they straight up don't make any sense. They're straight up confusing. They're straight up non-intuitive. They're weird. And one of the weirdest things among many contenders is the concept of non-locality. If I take a particle, an electron, I view this electron in quantum mechanics not as a tiny little point, but as a fuzzy cloud of probabilities of where this electron might be the next time I go looking for it. That cloud, that fuzzy cloud is defined by a wave equation, the wave function, and it, it in its evolution through time is governed by the Schrodinger wave equation. Okay, that's weird enough, but let's make it weirder. Let's take another electron. It has its own cloud of probabilities. It has its own wave function associated with it. And when I bring these two electrons close together, naturally, their little cloud of probabilities is gonna overlap. Of course, because they're now close to each other and the fuzziness is gonna intermingle. And then I take these two electrons apart, they're still intermingled. Once they interact, they share a common wave function. There's not two separate wave functions that come in and then go out. Instead, it's two separate wave functions that become a single wave function, a single cloud of probability that describes both particles simultaneously. And then I pull these particles apart and nothing has happened to sever their link. Nothing has happened to separate their wave functions. They, they simply exist now under a single unified cloud of probability that a single quantum state that describes both particles simultaneously. This wouldn't be a big deal if it weren't a big deal. And the reason it's a big deal is because these two particles now share a common state, I can separate them far on the other side of the room, on the other side of the universe, it doesn't matter. And because they share a common state, if I learn and perform some experiment on this electron over here, I automatically know what the other electron is up to without having to go visit it, without having to receive any signals from it. This is entanglement. When two particles share a common quantum state and I perform experiments on one to observe it, I immediately can know what the other particle is up to without receiving any signals. It looks like it's going faster than the speed of light. It or looks like I'm receiving information or communicating with this particle faster than the speed of light. It is one of the most troubling aspects of quantum mechanics, but it's very, very real. And one of the reasons it's so troubling is that we had worked so hard to get rid of action at a distance. You know, at Newton's laws, we had a Newton's universal theory of gravity, and it was great, and it was powerful, and it predictive, uh, but it didn't tell us how gravity actually propagated, how forces actually propagated. You know, if I, if I change where the moon is, the Earth is going to respond to that, and, and it should take time, but in Newton's gravity, that change was instant. We called this action at a distance, and it was really weird. Newton himself said, I have no idea what's going on. Some, another generation will figure that out. It would take until Einstein to solve that problem with the development of general relativity and the realization that gravity does propagate at the speed of light. And this fit in with everything we knew about the other forces of nature too, is that, yeah, if I want to influence you, I have to send signals to you. If I want to uh, uh, reach out and touch you, I have to do so slower than the speed of light. I actually have to do some work and travel the distance between us. And so if you're far away from me, I can just keep to myself and I'm my own thing. I'm totally local and only nearby things, you know, this chair, the walls, the air in this room, that's what affects me. You way over there, you don't affect me because you're not local to me. And we had developed in, prior to quantum mechanics this very sophisticated idea of locality of, of just if I have a situation, I just need to look at this situation. That's all I need to look at. I don't need to worry about the rest of the universe. And this makes intuitive sense too. When I go about my day, 
or you go about your day, you don't worry about what Jupiter is up to. You don't worry about what in the Andromeda galaxy is doing today. You don't care about that supernova that went off a billion years ago. You, those aren't local to you. Those don't affect you. They don't influence you. You just go about your day based on what the stuff near to you. Quantum mechanics tells us a different story. Quantum mechanics tells us that particles do get entangled, that they do share quantum states, that distances don't matter, that I can have a particle over here and I see it's doing its weird quantum thing and it's actually being influenced by a particle over here and it appears that information is being sent faster than the speed of light. It's not really being sent faster than the speed of light because I just see a quantum particle doing random quantum things. I have no idea what its partner is doing. If I wanna verify that these particles were entangled and actually influencing each other, I have to send signals, I have to communicate, I have to go slower than the speed of light. So no information and no causality is being transmitted faster than the speed of light. But it is telling us that Quantum mechanics is not a local theory of physics. That it appears that some atomic particles, when they become entangled, do influence, influence each other regardless of distance. And immediately you start asking, how? How can that possibly be? Intuition tells us that particles or, or physics just depends on, on what's happening around you. It shouldn't depend on what's happening, but quantum mechanics tells us a different story. And yes, that's weird. Welcome to Quantum Mechanics. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to see how you can support this show. And like, share, and subscribe. Do all the usual YouTube stuff. And I'll see you next time.